So I, I just like to quickly paint a picture for you as to what that would look like, a shortcoming and a mistake. I'd like to do one for the ladies and one for the men very quickly. Ladies, I'd like to imagine that you invite me over for lunch. That's a good idea, isn't it? You cook me up something vegetarian and I'll be happy, right? And let's just imagine I'm a talkative person, you're a talkative person perhaps, and, and you're cooking up something and my whole family's over there and we're just, we're just talking up a storm and uh, all of a sudden this, this something begins to waft into the air and oh, I, I, I burned the lasagna, right? And, and you go in and he's like, oh, we got carried away in conversation. I set the oven too high. I forgot to grease the pan. It's ruined. Okay, that's the ladies. Question for you. Would, would that be considered a mistake? Is it a mistake to burn the lasagna? Do you think that you'd bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus over that? <laughs> Men, I want you to imagine with me that you are going to build a dog house. Okay, uh, we all love dogs, those of us that love dogs. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna build a dog house. And so we go to doghouse.com and we download the PDF file with the blueprints and, and we, we decide, we selected the one we want. And, and uh, we, we, we go down to the lumber mart, we've picked out the lumber and we begin to build the house. And we, we, uh, you have to measure four boards to three, one foot, uh, three foot, one and a quarter inch. And so we measure the first one, three foot, one and a quarter inch and measure it, mark it and cut it, yep, and then we measure up the next one, three foot, one and a quarter, got it, mark and saw, the third one, and right after we saw the third one, the phone rings, the ubiquitous cell phone, bring, you say, oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, no, no, it's not gonna work out for me, yeah, okay, see you later, and then we, we take the next one, and, in, and, and then we saw the final board, and then we go to assemble the doghouse, and as we are assembling the doghouse, we realize that we have inadvertently, accidentally cut one of the boards short, not to three foot, one and a quarter inch, but to three foot and a quarter inch, question, would that be considered a shortcoming? <laughs> Amen? Do you think you'd bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus over it? Beloved, when she says we shall often have to bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes, of course she's talking about sins. It doesn't even make sense to understand it any other way. And it doesn't hurt to read the context, even if we are overcome by the enemy. That's a sin. Even if we are overcome by the enemy, if you burn the lasagna, it wasn't the devil's fault. If you cut the board too short, it wasn't the devil's fault. Even if we are overcome by the enemy, she says, now I want you to listen to these words very, very, very carefully. We are not cast off. I don't care how you feel in that moment when you just blew it. You are not cast off. Notice what she says, not forsaken and rejected of God. How do you feel you feel cast off? How do you feel you feel discouraged? How do you feel you feel despairing? How do you feel you feel forsaken and rejected of God? But beloved, what did we learn just the other night? Who was the only person that was ever truly alone? It was Jesus. And the reason that you can be completely sure that you have not been forsaken by God is that Jesus was. Amen. We are not forsaken and rejected by God. Now listen to this. The next sentence is one word. <laughs> Ellen White was a forceful communicator, beloved. I mean, don't charge her with not being able to communicate. The next word is, and it's a whole sentence by itself, she says, no! Let me read it to you in context. We shall often have to bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes, but we are not to be discouraged. Even if we are overcome by the enemy, we are not cast off, not forsaken and rejected of God, period. No! I guess that's her way of saying that that's not what happens. No, no, no. Christ is at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. Said John the beloved, I write these things unto you that you will not sin and if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Steps to Christ, page 64. Beloved, if you fall, heaven forbid, keep getting up. The single secret to succeeding in the Christian walk is just that, keep getting getting up. Jesus said to sinful Peter on one occasion, Peter came and said, oh Lord, I'm feeling really magnanimous today. If someone sinned against me, I would forgive him seven times. And Jesus said, you're just getting started, my friend, because you'd have to forgive 70 times seven. That's 490 times. Now I have some sins that have dogged my steps in days gone by and perhaps even at the present time, but I am not personally aware of any single sin that I have ever committed 490 times in a single day. And if Jesus expected sinful Peter to do that, how much more is the illimitable grace of God willing to forgive you 
no matter how many times you have fallen, as long as you keep getting up to ask for forgiveness. And of course, what goes along with forgiveness, you have turned from the vomit, you have turned from the mire, and you ask Jesus as part of asking for forgiveness, Lord, I don't want to do that again. Can we be done with this one? Keep getting up. Some of you are discouraged. Some of you are struggling. Struggling is not bad news as long as you keep getting up. This should not surprise you. If you find that you are struggling in your Christian experience, if you find that there is a transition, if you find that there is a process from the man that you used to be or the woman you used to be to the man you want to be or the, the, the man you, 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 you would hope you could be, beloved, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, no man having drunk the old wine immediately desires the new because he thinks the old is better. He says it can happen, the transition can happen, the process can happen, but it doesn't happen overnight. How about you, Paul? What do you have to say about this subject? I'll tell you what I say, says the Apostle Paul. We are saved by faith, but it takes place from faith to faith. We are being transformed into his glorious image, but it is from glory to glory to glory, and our outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day by day. Thank you very much, Paul, for agreeing with Jesus. And how about you, Ellen White? What do you say? There is no such thing as instantaneous sanctification. Sanctification is the work of a lifetime. Keep getting up. The one time that the promises of God will not avail for you is the time you stay down. A just man falls seven times and rises up yet again. You can't fall unless you are up. Get back up and dust yourself off. Better yet, have Jesus dust you off. Go to him. Ask for his righteousness. Ask for his forgiveness. Turn your heart over to him and repeat as often as necessary. The good news of the gospel is, is that, and I'm one of these old-fashioned preachers that believes that that stuff's going to stop one day. I don't think that God has saved us just to put us into a recurring cycle of sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning over and over and over again. Sure, there is a transition period, but I remind you that Jesus said, you will come to love the new. I'm one of those old-fashioned preachers that believes you can arrive there. Not in your own power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Beloved, if I didn't believe that Jesus could give me victory over sin, I wouldn't be a Christian. If the devil is strong enough to tempt me to sin, I need a God that is strong enough to keep me from sinning. The point is this, in that process of growing, in that process of holiness, in that process of sanctification, you call it whatever you want, you use whatever nomenclature you want, in the process, if and when you fall, get back up. This does not only apply to righteousness, by the way, it applies to soul winning. You're going to go out, you're going to knock on some doors, and slam door, slam door, slam door. You're going to give a Bible study to someone, and you might find that you ride the beast too early. Man, shouldn't have done that. You're going to make mistakes. Keep getting up. Try it again, try it again, try it again, try it again, try it again. God can turn you into a soul winner for his kingdom. Maybe not a Mark Finley preaching to thousands, but God can make you an effective communicator of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? And the most effective, the most powerful arrow that is in your quiver to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ is that you yourself are living and believing that Jesus Christ is your savior here and now. Not because you're so good, but because you're so bad. Keep getting up.